Hey everybody, I'm um, going to do another flea market find segment. Uh, this actually wasn't a flea market find, this is the uh, used tool store that I frequent. And uh, this used tool store, when they were in their previous location um, last year, they had gotten in a uh, Kennedy toolbox and it was an 11 drawer and uh, an intermediate chest. And at the time, I ended up buying the intermediate chest because I thought it would fit one of my uh, toolboxes that I already had, and I passed on buying the 11 draw. And at the time, I didn't realize that in the Kennedy toolboxes, the 11 draw top boxes are much harder to come by and command a higher price. So I've gotten a lot of 7 and 8 draw top boxes. Um, I've bought some for as little as. If they're beat up with a bad lock, as little as uh, 1750, I think is the cheapest one I've ever bought. Um, the 11 draw that I passed on, I think I passed on it at 120 bucks, and I regretted not buying it after that. I actually went back the following week to try and buy it, and it was already gone. So when I uh, saw that he had gotten another one in, I made sure that. Uh, I got there to snag this one. Um, this one is very clean and this one's a little bit different than the uh, one that I originally passed on. It turns out I didn't realize that there was more than one version of an 11 draw. So um, open this up and if you notice there's a key lock on this center draw and that's what um, distinguishes one from the other or so I thought. The uh, part number on this box label actually, the glue kind of dried up, uh, is a 3611-346384 now I forgot what the other I think the other one is an 11624 or something like that. But new, this is the more expensive of the two 11 draw boxes. I don't know what else might be different about it. They're both 11 draw, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. But it does have this larger center draw here that, uh, I don't know if the dimensions are different on the two. but. It's got this larger center draw that can be locked independent of everything else. So, anyways, so I was pleased as punch to uh, finally get myself an 11 draw. And uh, as luck would have it, he had the original intermediate box with it. So he had uh, 150 on this top box and 75 on the bottom box. And as I suspected, um, he gave me a price break for buying two at the same time. Uh, I got the two for 200 which um, I've checked online and seen what they're going for. I think that was very reasonable. Uh, this is, as I said, this is an extra clean one. Um, seems to be in excellent shape. And this came with uh, quite a few keys. I've got one key here now, but this actually came with several keys. So... Um, the key, the, the lock for the intermediate box, the lock for this little drawer, and the lock for here are all, are all keyed uh, together. Same key operates all three locks, which is nice. And then as usual with a lot of his boxes, he doesn't clean out every single last thing. So we're going to go through and just see what's in here real quick. Here is a... Uh, standard drill sizes, metric drill sizes, and tap guide sizes chart on a little laminated holder. Um, there's a mirror and there's uh, two bottles of 404 instant adhesive, Loctite brand instant adhesive. I think this is basically a super glue type product. Um, I, while I was there, I did grab a couple other items that I paid for separately. This is for ten bucks. I got this transfer punch set. Um, these are short little transfer punches, but it's a complete set. 
and they look like they're in pretty good shape except for this one right here is bent this really small one but other than that um, I think this will be a handy little thing to have so even though it's just a uh, I believe this is just a, a no name or you know Taiwanese deal figured figured that was worth ten bucks and then I got him he had ten on this I think I got him to give me this for seven bucks it intrigued me um, this is a it's some sort of a tap wrench but what's unique about it is I mean this part right here is just basically like a regular tap wrench and but then it slides into this guide and uh, let me uh, let me zoom in on this. All right, so here's a better look at that transfer punch set. So, get that. And so then here's this weird little tap guide, uh, like tap wrench deal here. And uh, this is actually marked uh, Flex Bar, F L E X Bar, made in the USA. I don't see a part number on it, but the nearest I could figure from its design, because of the shape of this right here, is I think this is to help guide a tap in on a rod. So if, for instance, let's say I had, uh, this is kind of a small diameter, but let's say I had a hole drilled in here and I wanted to tap that hole, then I think this would sit right like that help keep the uh, the tap going in straight so I figured if that's what that's for it might be a handy thing to have and I've never seen one like this so I thought it was kinda cool so there's nothing else in the top box there uh, there's some magnets here Sandvik magnets <laughs> and uh, some 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 sheet magnets from Gurig Incorporated superior quality cutting tools and these Sandvik magnets say uh, Sandvik Coromant GC4025 yeah here's a little card a little reference card that he had stuck in there it's a uh, speed and feed calculations so surface feet per minute how to calculate that, um, RPM, feed, IPT, not sure what that is, inches per something, surface feet per minute, oh IPT, feet, feed per tooth and in inches, hmm, well anyways, neat little card. So, starting at the top left drawer, We've got a, uh, I actually thought that was a battery when I first took it out. This is, uh, oh, auto point leads. This is for a lead pencil replacement. And here are some long leads for mechanical pencils. Here's a couple of components for a lock, like uh, a lock on one of these cabinets or something along that lines all that was in there. Here's a little uh, tiny, oh that's a really small end mill, Fullerton 0.1562. That's really heavy for such a small end mill. I think that might be carbide. And this is a uh, carbide end mill 330 seconds for flute. Boy I thought that last one was small. That's really small. That doesn't look like that's what's in there, though. Hmm. And here's an end mill made out of some kind of funky alloy. Got a weird color to it. I'm going to close this top drawer so the light gets down here a little bit. Next drawer has nothing but a uh, Q-tip. At least it's not used. The middle lock drawer was empty. Top right drawer, ooh, piece of chalk. 
a long feeler gauge blade. This is a .305 millimeter or 12 thousandths precision brand, but it's just a single blade. Here's a couple of little tiny scales that are marked thin bit. Thin bit cutting tools, Kaiser Tool Company. Some band-aids. This is a well that's a magnet that has a uh, oh I see it's a teles telescopic pickup tool when you drop something down inside somewhere pencil sharpener book of matches, band-aid grease pencil another piece of chalk and a Swiss made SPI whatever this little thing is sharp is what it is I don't know what that is next draw down that's a little roller bearing there's a battery probably dead a long grub screw or adjusting screw out of something Pretty much empty except for some push pins, an X Acto knife with a strange little blade in it. Never seen one like that. Tiny. It is a genuine X Acto. A little machined block that's got this black coating on it, which makes me think it's part of an indicator set up of some some type and here's a little button might also be part of this whatever this originally was belonging to here's another block what these little pieces are here is a well it's just a small stone it's a Norton Nor Norbide dressing stick Small grinding stone. This is a uh, razor blade, straight edge razor blade and a little plastic handle. A couple of carriage screws. What these are. More fullerton tool. Bits some type. Tiny stuff, again. I can't get this. Well, I just did a number on this whole cover right here. This label, I mean. I'm not going to bother taking those out now. Clippered Minimatics box. It's empty. Wonder what was in that. Clippered Instrument Laboratory. This draw is empty. This draw. Oh, here's more of these button things. Anybody know what these are? Four of those and two of these. And the bottom draw is empty, so there wasn't much in this toolbox. But I didn't buy this one for the contents. This was all about the box. Alright. So the uh, intermediate top draw is just a steel rod. Oh, wife was just letting me know she's going to bed. And I will be too soon enough. It's getting late. Here's a damaged screw and bolt, broken bolt extractor kit. Grab it. With the instructions. I've seen these advertised on TV. This is a. You basically you stick this in your cordless drill and you use this side right here to. Uh, drill a countersunk hole and then you flip it around your drill and this edge right here is supposed to be able to turn into that screw and it's got a reverse thread on it so as you drill it's supposed to unscrew it. Never been used. Here's a little envelope here of number 54 drill bits. 
And to give you an idea, it's got quite a few in it, but to give you an idea, look how tiny those suckers are. What's in here? This says one letter G, Cleveland twist drill, number 4002, chucking reamer. That's what it is. Looks like that might be new or barely used. Here's a little interesting doohickey here. This is a little block that looks like somebody made, stamped. So this is for uh, if you want to check your size of your drill real quick. Just stick it into the hole there and you can see. So he's got all the big numbers here. It looks like a half inch. I see a seven. This is probably seven eighths. Three eighths, five sixteenths. 8 and 10, I wonder if those are millimeter, 14, 2, 4, 5, and 6 for these little holes at the bottom there, or maybe those are number size drill holes. Here is a box, wow, look at those very long skinny drill bits. Here's a box full of very small taps. Here's a box with a whole bunch of a couple of small taps in there and then a bunch of small drill bits. This is all gravy. That is a very fine thread tap. A lot of threads per inch on that sucker. Let's see if that's what this says it is. Well that's interesting. There's no markings whatsoever on this case. And here's a little plastic box of taps. These all look brand new. Acid brush. Half inch high speed 60 degree single flute countersink. Looks brand new. Pulley taps, Union Butterfield, plug pulley, quarter inch by 20. Oh, there's two of them in here. So what these are, these, these are taps on really long shanks so that you can get down into, this is when you're making a pulley and you want to have a grub screw that's down between the sheave of the pulley and you need to get down in there. Betcha those are expensive to buy. And in the bottom drawer, the first thing I noticed in the bottom drawer is this this here, which I thought maybe this was uh, like repurposed from something, but I think this actually might, no, I don't know, maybe that was cut out by hand. This looks like it came out of somebody's uh, desk drawer, one of those old steel desks. Bet you that's what that, that came out of. But uh, he cut it to length and even notched out for the lock mechanism so it fits right in here in the bottom drawer. I think I might keep that in there. That's kind of neat. Uh, oh, okay. Grub screw, a couple other nonsensical things. Look at these right here. Anybody know what these are? I know what these are. A little sharp little scriber point with a little knurled knob on the end. And there's one there. And what these are, these are for on squares combination squares in particular there's usually a place on the square to store a, uh, a scriber and these go missing a lot and these are probably because they're in here they're probably off of you know a machinist square maybe even a sterret although how you would know beats me that looks like it might be off a cheaper one this one looks like it's a a little more precisely made. Don't know what this came out of, but this is a micro switch and a little plastic bracket with this little plunger. Paint stick. Here's a threaded collar with little holes in it for like a Tommy bar or something to go into. So I don't know what that goes. That almost looks like it goes like on a collet closer or a collet block or something like that. 
but I don't have one that that'll fit. It's smaller than the one that I bought. Uh, what do we have here? This is some sort of electrical device. It's a switch. And it is marked common, normally open, normally closed. If I were a betting man, I would say this is magnetic. No, I don't hear it opening or I don't hear it clicking at all when I put the magnet near it. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Oh wait, this marking is on it right here. A I R T Company, Troy, Michigan, S F 100, 22 amp, 100, 125 comma 250 volt AC. 22 amp. Well, that's quite the current reading. But if it's a switch, how the heck do you turn it on and off? Hmm. A couple of these hairpin looking clips. That's it. That's all that I got out of this box. But like I said, it was the box is what I wanted. And the only issue with the boxes that I found, and it's not really an issue, is um I do have this, uh, somebody glued on a uh, thing here, which I think originally was supposed to be able to, yeah, it says the hold up, this is for, you put a piece of paper under there and it's supposed to hold it up, and then uh, on the side of the box, over here, can't really see it in this dark side, but there's some sort of a bracket that they had to remove the handle, put the bracket on, and then rebolt the handle on to install this bracket. There, I turned it over so the light is getting on this, whatever this is. You can see this is just an, uh, an L bracket that they stuck on here so that they could put this thing on, whatever this is. This is plastic and feels really cheesy. And it's got almost like a little rack of teeth on it, so I have no idea what that was for. But he must have really won't used it a lot because he went to the trouble of making sure he could keep it handy by having it actually, you know, screwed onto this thing. Actually, that screw's so loose I can I can turn it with my fingers. All right, so I took that off. No markings on it. Yep. So I don't know if anybody recognizes what that's from, but going in the basket. So then I said to him, I said, wow, this is great. I finally got my 11 drawer, uh, you know, and I got the intermediate box. I said, it's too bad there wasn't a base cabin. He says, oh, there is. He says, uh, I had to make so many trips to this guy's estate cleaning it out. I didn't get it all in one shot. So he said, the uh, base cabin will be here next week. So I went back the following week and lo and behold, there it was. So uh, I snagged the base cabinet and uh, when I walked in, I was shocked because there was the base cabinet and what was hanging off the side? The side cabinet. And, you know, when I saw the prices on them, I was like, oh boy. I said, you know, well, first of all, he knew I was coming back for it, so not much incentive for him to deal. But he had 200 on this base cabinet and 140 on the side cabinet. So um, I was going to just buy the base cabinet, but I really wanted the side cabinet, and uh, I'm glad I ended up uh, working a deal with them and buying them both. And I actually ended up, what I did was I, I gave him um, the money for this cabinet and just left a balance of 75 bucks and let him hold that for me for the week and then came back the following week and picked up that one. And I'm glad I did because everybody wanted that side cabinet. Apparently that's a little bit harder to come by. And it's not a cheap little cabinet. Uh, Kennedy gets quite a bit of money for that sucker. But now I've got, you know, the base, the side, the intermediate, and the 11 draw to sit on top of it. It's going to be a really nice setup for me. And the whole thing is nice and clean. The base cabinet, the only thing, uh, it's not really a problem, but... 
somebody added an electrical outlet box on the side there with a cord but it's uh you know they just used one of the uh, they used, used a bracket and they used one of the screws for the side handle anyway so it's not like they drilled extra holes and butchered the cabinet to do it this has got really nice heavy casters on it and uh so this has got goodies in it too i think pretty i think this one's pretty much empty so the top draw we've got a a new starrett hacksaw blade whatever these little oh this is a nice little thumb screw we could use that for something later maybe and then whatever these little metal things are I have no idea. You know, <laughs> Scotch right bad. Uh, strain relief. Craftsman socket. It's a weird little cutter. Coat hook. All right. This looks like a. Oh, it's just a piece of scrap steel stock. That's a little threaded rod. I wonder if that's part of an indicator set. It's also a little unusual rod. There's a few of these. There's two of these. I don't know what that's for. Empty. Pretty much empty. Okay, so that bottom one you gotta I remember now figured this out you gotta have this draw open part way and then you can open this up and that compartment's empty down there so that's pretty cool yeah so I ended up getting like eight keys in all but they're all duplicate keys because all of the locks on this whole setup are all keyed to the, to the same key uh, Sold. Divider in that one. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, this, one, this one was completely empty. There was nothing in it. And then the day that I went back and picked up this uh, side box, I bought a couple of uh, little items. So I'll show you those and then we'll close out this segment. So the center junk table was, uh, I think it was two for a buck or something like that at that table. And I found this little cutter. This is a high speed steel 3 16 inch uh, slotting cutter. And I didn't see any uh, broken teeth on it. There's this uh, D ring, I think you call this, or whatever this is. Basically, this is just handy to put a couple of chains together. And this right here, which is from, looks like to me it's from an indicator stand with the thumb wheel on it. So I think I got uh, these three pieces for a buck. And then this is a uh, Huot, or I don't even know how you say this, H-U-O-T, but this is a company that makes uh, all kinds of cases for uh, drill bits. They make the big drill indexes and the small ones and they make small ones like this. But this is a uh, reamer index. Uh, 1/16th to half inch by 64th inch increments reamer index and this actually had a few reamers in it that look like they're in pretty good shape so I asked him what uh, what he wanted to get for that and he says well he says you know he doesn't do very well with the reamers anyways so um, he said how about five bucks so happy to get that for five bucks and I think I've got some of the reamers that are missing from here in my vast collection of reamers so eventually what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll fill this set out and keep it and then this uh, I had seen this the week before and 
we got into a conversation about it and I forgot if he gave me a price that I, I passed on or whatever but uh, this is a uh, an R8 to uh, a Jacobs it's marked R8 J33 so I believe this is um, um, R8 to go in the mill and then this will fit a certain size of Jacobs chuck so it's a Jacobs taper standard now that was in this box in this plastic and it looks brand new and it looks like it's pretty good but I can't find any markings of the manufacturer on this but the box says that this is an Albrecht so we kinda went back and forth on this because you know neither one of us were positive whether or not this was an Albrecht uh, or not and uh, so I got this for five bucks then I forgot what I gave for this this he just had sitting there and he didn't know what this was so I think I ended up saying I'll, I'll take it for like three or four bucks and take a chance on it but I think if I'm not mistaken that what this is is a uh, a die holder so I think this is a shop made tool that was really well executed they did the knurling on it here and you've got you could hold one size die on this side and then a different the smaller size dies on this side and I think the idea is that you're supposed to be able to uh, maybe uh, chuck this rod or hold this rod in a collet and then uh, run this on here on the lathe and then uh, you know come up against your piece in your your uh, chuck and put a Tommy bar in here and basically put this on and have it guide itself on perfectly straight at least that's the theory I'm operating under and then if you want to do the other side you get the other size over here for smaller uh, taps I mean uh, I'm sorry dies so well these are these these are not round ones but dies like this and then the last item I grabbed for five bucks was a really good buy um, was this knurling tool he had sitting there and he thought that I really was interested in the knurling tool and the reality is what I had spotted was that this is an Alorix BXA1 holder it's missing the uh, stud and the little thumb wheel that goes on top here for adjustment but other than that it looks like it's in excellent shape so I got a knurling tool and a BXA holder for five bucks so that was a steal and that is where I'm gonna quit for tonight until next time